Hey everybody. Before I get into the review of this hard disk enclosure, the TerraMaster DS300, I was going to tell you I have it configured for 80 terabytes of available storage using a RAID 5 configuration. But how much really is 80 terabytes? 80 terabytes is enough to hold the full text of every volume of every book in the Library of Congress. If you were doing this for movies, you could hold 16,000 high definition movies, which would be enough to watch a different movie every night for 43 years. Yeah, 43 years worth. Streaming video at a gigabyte, that would be about streaming continuously for nine years to play it all. Cloud storage, of course, video games, research data, lots of things could be held on it. In my use case, it's mainly to store these videos. These videos, when they are stored in 4K resolution, especially the raw video, which I tend to try to save in case I need it in the future, this takes up a lot of space. I had several 5 terabyte SSD drives that I use because of their quick access speed and turnover uh, for use during editing, for example. Uh, these were about to fill up as storage devices, and they're not sufficient to do backup. So I needed a bigger backup device. I already have a network attached storage that has around 32 terabytes of data, but even that's going to fill up soon if I continue at the current rate of video production. So I wanted to have a direct attached storage device that would be a lot less likely to run out of space, at least in the foreseeable future. And if it does, you can always add another unit. Anyway, here's the, here's the review. So this is the TerraMaster DS300, which is a hard disk enclosure capable of holding up to five SATA hard disks with a maximum capacity of 20 terabytes each. This is a directly attached device. As you can see, it has a USB-C outlet and a power outlet. There is no network attachment, so this is not an NAS, but is a DAS device with two cooling fans. Aluminum case, plastic on the back and plastic on the front, as you can see here. This is RAID capable. It can do RAID 0, 1, 2, 5, and 10, configured through a software program that you download from their website. Pull the drive out. This is a 20 terabyte Seagate reconditioned drive from Amazon. The drive only costs about $216 each. Since this will be used, in my case, in a RAID 5 configuration, I'm not too worried about the reliability of the drives, but the reviews have been good, and most of these units have only a day or two of previous use before they were reconditioned. You really don't need the screwdriver. This panel pops off and has little plastic teeth that grab into the side of the drive, so it was very easy to put the drive into the device. I have four of these already installed. A fifth one should arrive sometime today. The only interface is really the power switch on the front. It just slides in and seats into the connection. The reviews say it has very good speed through the USB-C and good reliability. So in a RAID 5 configuration, this will add 80 terabytes of storage with the final drive used for parity information. With this configuration, you can lose one drive, and because of the fifth drive, that drive can be restored without any data loss. So there's 100 terabytes total storage, of which 80 will be usable with one drive again left for backup data. To automatically restore using the RAID 5 setup. This enclosure itself sold for about $260 from Amazon. There are other very similar versions, one of which was ordered in error that only allowed RAID on the first two drives, and I wanted one that was capable of RAID 5, so I returned the other unit that physically looks the same, though it uses a hardware switch to determine the type of RAID in use. This one again, as I mentioned, uses a RAID 
manage your software and is compatible with Windows or Macintosh and is downloaded from their site as is the user guide. There was a quick setup guide, but there's really not much to set up. You just install the drives, plug it in. If you don't do anything else, you can format this as five separate disk drives. To avoid having to upgrade, I just went ahead and bought the maximum capacity since the drives were not that expensive. So the total purchase was a little over $1,000, which should give me enough storage space for the foreseeable future. See the link in the description below for both the hard disks and the enclosure. Again, if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I encourage you to leave comments below if there are any questions. Until next time, see you later.